City are back. Foden's back. Let's go. Come on, 1-0. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, -ho! why didn't you pass it, you selfish cock? Oh, what a strike. Oh! Do you trust me? Do you trust me? Do you trust me? Zin, that's a shame. No! <laughs> 20 seconds into the second half, and Sporting are ahead. Right, why does the cameraman keep going to the manager? Oh, they're in on goal. They're in on goal. 2-1. 20 seconds. 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 That's a penalty. What are you doing, mate? 3-1. Shite city. How was that penalty? Gavardio, what are you playing at? What is happening? No! What are we doing? Oh, no way, man. No way, man. That I'm watching on the pitch, the absolute lack of intelligence is mind blowing. Mateus Nunes penalised this time. <laughs> what are we doing? Oh, my lads. What is happening? Oh dear, guys. Well, well, that's not good. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. We are cooked. We are cooked, mate. Holy shit. City, you're back. Foden's back. Let's go. Come on, 1 0. Ah, uh, welcome back to the fan channel review. My my favourite bit was the uh, nobbins, <laughs> nobbins. What? Why do they keep going to the manager? They always go to the manager when the team scores. It's not just because Amarim's now the Man United boss. They always do it. But look, it was a beat down for Man City last night. An amazing evening for Sporting for Liverpool. A horrible one for Real Madrid as well. We're going to go through some of the best fan content from last night. Give you my opinions. I want yours in the comments section below, though. Hit the like button now. Make sure you are subscribing. I saw this here. I think it's from the City Ramble. I saw this last night. I haven't listened to it yet. I wanted to save it for you. Let's see what my guy said. He was out there at the game. Let's take a listen. Well, that was pretty terrible, wasn't it? Sporting for City won, despite taking the lead, City in the second half absolutely abject something stinks something really stinks i kind of like that honesty i really do like that honesty you know we 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 we've had a few city fans that have come on the terrace hamza v it takes a lot of pushing and a lot of probing for them to be honest about city situation that something isn't right with how they're playing football i don't buy that it's just some injuries yes rodri's out okay Yes, uh, Diaz and Stones are out right now, but they've been playing poorly for a large part of this season. And I'd love to get your views on what it is as well, alongside the injuries. Starting to reek at this team, at this football club, whether or not that's the internal politics, the squad, the state of the performances, I don't know, but something just isn't quite sitting right. And you can tell that on the players, they're not, they don't feel like they necessarily want to play for each other. And that's something that you would never have said about Pep Guardiola team. Is it fixable? Of course it is. Pep Guardiola's manager, and as long as he is in charge, you'd back him to find a solution. But you have to start asking questions about the state of the squad because the midfield... The state of the squad is such a big a big component here, and I think that this is what, what City are going through. Yes, there's injuries, and I understand that. But they're going through a bit of a crisis because the players are losing belief. And I don't know how many times I've said this, and I'll, I'll, I'll die on this hill. So much of sport, so much of success, so much of consistency is mentality. Of course, you've got to have the ability. You've got to have the great coaching, the facilities, the infrastructure. However, if the belief isn't there, like, again, you can still fail to kind of get over the line. And I think that there's a lot of players in this city squad who are just not quite good enough. The recruitment, the sort of backups and alternatives to Rodri, the replacements for your Riyad Mahrez's and your Raheem Sterling's haven't been good enough. So when KDB and Haaland are not scoring the goals, who genuinely, who else is there? Foden's having an off-season. I know he scored last night. And I think all of these things are making an impact. I don't think it's just Rodri being out. But I love your thoughts and I love your feelings on it in the comments section below. <laughs>
It's coming. Man City in crisis. But are they in a crisis? They've lost their last three games in a row. They've got big games in the Premier League coming up against Brighton, Spurs and Liverpool. They're vulnerable. Bernardo Silva says it's a dark place. And Pep Guardiola himself acknowledges they're in a difficult time. But is it really just that standard Man City autumn wobble and back in May or next in May, we will see Man City's dominance again? It's Listen, they could certainly still win the league from this point because they're two points off the top. They can turn this around. The January window is around the corner. But they are definitely in a crisis right now. And I've always been someone that I've never just said out, outright they'll win it. Nobody else has a chance. I've never liked that narrative. But this does feel different this year. They've lost three games on the bounce. They struggled in their previous two or three games before that. I think it's clear the players themselves are talking about how kind of dark it is in the dressing room right now. I certainly think it isn't over the top to state that they are in a crisis. It's an interesting one because I think there is something very different about this one. Get your comments in below. <laughs> I have looked at Man City over the recent weeks. They've lost their last three games, but the three Premier League games before that against Wolves and Fulham especially, they were lucky. So it could have been worse. Fulham should have got at least a draw at the Etihad. It was a last minute, you know, controversial goal against Wolves. And Southampton, they only beat 1-0. So in some ways... Nine points from 12 in the last 12 points available for Man City is probably better than they should have got. So in some ways, you could look at it and go, well, we've seen this with Man City before. They have a little bit of a wobble. They've not dropped enough points um, and they'll be fine. And I think Pep said it himself. They're still in all competitions. They've got to fight through it. And that's the and that's the truth of the matter there from Goldbridge. They're only two points behind. You know, Should they lose this weekend and, and, and Liverpool and Arsenal win? And Arsenal close the gap and Liverpool suddenly go five points clear. If that five-point gap becomes a seven-point gap or an eight-point gap, then I think there's a different scenario. You know, if they get knocked, they're already out of the um, they're out of the League Cup. You know, this this moves into January and they go out of the FA Cup early, then maybe people will take a bit more notice. But it is recoverable. It is a crisis, but it certainly, certainly is recoverable. <laughs> Like I, like I was saying, we were very lucky today in the games. The feeling with my players, the way they they celebrate this this win, the moment with the fans, uh, was very very special. Uh, so I take this to Premier League. When I arrive there, is a different world, a different pressure. I I will try to be the same. Will be fun, very fun, and I'm ready for the for the challenge. Wow. So that was him speaking in English at last and tells us that he's ready for... The wow. I, I, him speaking in English at last. I mean, the, the digs that are already coming in at Amarim are a madness. An absolute madness. And Man United fans, I know he's got to perform for us. I know he's got to improve us for us to stay on side. But please, I believe... You may not believe what I believe, so that's fair. But we've got the structure in place. We've got the coach coming in. We're going to rebuild this squad. It's going to take a few years. Please stand behind him because the media are going to do whatever they can to cut the legs off this. And as supporters, I think we really do need to support. So what kind of challenge, Danny? I mean, when it comes to expectation, was this the best or the worst thing that could have happened for Amarim? I think for most educated football watchers, they understand that that result means nothing, really. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I love that that comment. Had they had lost 4-1, it would mean so much. Had Sporting been battered last night, it would have meant everything. It would have been so important. It would have been the be-all and the end-all of, of this appointment. They smashed City. It means nothing really in the grand scheme of things. It means nothing. I don't think it means everything. We know we're not going to play like this straight away, right? We know we're not going to be that good, as good as Sporting are on, you know, th their level in the league straight away. But the idea that what he's done in Portugal, the results that he's had last night's win, that it means zero. It means nothing. You've got to re remember the words here. Zero. The hatred is mad. Players 
um, the, the the Premier League's completely different than European games. There's loads of fact. The City had half a team missing. They didn't have half a team missing. This this narrative that City got half a squad out. Yeah, you know, they had Ake on the bench. They had KDB on the bench. They've got Stones out, Diaz out, and you've got. Uh, Rodri out as an example, Grealish. But look, Grealish doesn't score or assist goals anyway. He hasn't scored since December. How big a miss is that in, in the, the grand scheme of things? They have got loads of replacements for Rodri, but they just are not finding the right combination, as it were. They've got some injuries, three or four players out. But that's pretty much not... Man United have got three or four players out. Arsenal have had three or four players out. The way City get defended is crazy. You know, it's it's a great win, and it's his his sporting team over the last two years, three years has evolved and become a really good watch. So that's that's encouraging, and he and he's warm and charismatic. He's got a bit about him. He's likable, isn't he? Yeah, I think so. Anyway, so yeah. I'm yeah. sure he'll, he'll sure he'll improve Man United. Well, be hard not to. I think you'd improve Man United. <laughs> blah 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 blah. And it's a goal. This here is the compilation someone sent me of Man United fans celebrating uh, goals last night. Let's take a little look. Goal, Sporting. Goal, Jokeres. He's in. He's in. He's in. He's in. He's in. He's in. Hey, Katie, you're in. It's gone. Shut up. Shut up. You are. Shut up. Shut up. Jokeres. Goal, goal, goal. Absolutely fantastic start by Sporting. What are you talking about now? Sporting take the lead. It's 2 1. Yeah, hate hate Yo. Oi, bring ball. this football. <laughs> bring this football. What? What are you saying? Why are you telling me, Ruben? I'm yeah, really getting battered. What a start to this half. It's a penalty for Sporting. And it was. You probably don't get them in the Premier League, but you definitely get them in Portugal against Edison. We're in again. We're, We're in again. We're in again. We're in again. We're in again. <laughs> I was a bit like that last night. I was a bit like that. And I was going to hold a big L if we got battered because I was saying this was the Manchester Derby light, you know. Penalty. Penalty. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! It's all going off! It's all going Man off! Man United fans will get cooked for this. It's not your team. Why are you celebrating? Trust me, this is our best night in the Champions League in about 11 years. Look at, look at him! Look at Mario! Oh, I'm gonna be a big hater! Oh, hey. I'm gonna play a hater! hater I'm hater. a ream boy! Ah, free! It could be free! It could be free! And he scores! Low to the bottom corner! Different penalty style this time, but it's absolutely fantastic. We're cooking here. Amarim is putting Pep to bed. <laughs> could this be? Could we be witnessing history here? Listen, it, 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 historic night for sporting. You know, you look at the size of the club and what they did, absolutely. But listen, I think Amarim is a special, special head coach. As long as he has the right structure, gets the right back in, and that doesn't just mean the money being spent. It means... Sometimes being told no, it means ensuring that toxic players are removed, not even for his personal benefit, the club's benefit. This is all so, so important. As long as football is put above commercial decisions, these are all things that we have not done properly in the last 11 years. And as long as we get that right, this could be an historic appointment. Look, viewers, as ever, hit the like button and make sure you're subscribing. 3.30, we're back with Straight Facts. Until then, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And we'll see you soon. Peace.